Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Aldas, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing my review for Season 2 of Drive to Survive. Now, this was a video that I wanted to do for quite a while, actually, and I've been planning to do it. And obviously, it's quite good now that we've got a few weeks till the start of the season. And of course, the Netflix special, uh, Drive to Survive Season 2, uh, came out only Friday. So, of course, like most people, I binged it straight away. I've seen it two times uh, through, and I thought it'd be quite a fun little video to do my review, kind of give my thoughts, uh, kind of give the positive and the negatives as well because I don't think it was a perfect series if you if you like to say uh, but at the same time I do think it was really great once again um, and at the end of the video I'm also going to give my score or rating for season two as well now don't forget guys if you do enjoy my content then drop a like smash that subscribe button and check out my social medias Instagram and Twitter will be above I think it's on that side. I get it wrong every single time. It's so embarrassing. Uh, now, I do have my laptop right down here because I've gone, I've gone like full Chris Stuckman. If you watch him, he does uh, movie reviews. Uh, so kind of like uh, similar to him. I've gone full Chris Stuckman. I've got a bunch of notes down here that I want to talk about a little bit. Uh, so I really kind of watched it and just kind of, Oh, kind of wrote down what I liked, what I didn't like, and to be honest, once again, season two was so great, and especially because the Formula One community, in terms of season one, it was a really big surprise that we got it, in my opinion, like, when I first saw it on Netflix, I kind of thought, oh, you know, it might be all right, it would just be another, like, almost Formula One documentary style, but to be honest, and I think quite a lot of the Formula One community found this as well, it was really good. Season one was a massive hit. Everyone enjoyed it. We got a bunch of really great kind of uh, little moments that we don't usually get to see in both uh, the Formula One season and also just regular documentaries. And it's the style back in season one and what they've continued in into season two. It's the style that they've used that's also quite unique. Now, obviously, as Formula One fans, we've seen like documentaries, we've seen even like uh, films following a specific driver, but they didn't actually follow the season. It wasn't like a season review that Netflix did last year and again carried over to season two. It was storylines. So specifically either teams or drivers over the course of the season, their storyline in terms of maybe their development or the season that they're having or what the driver is going through and what team they're going through. That's what we saw with Daniel Ricciardo. So it doesn't just focus race by race by race. And I thought that was a really clever idea actually in season one. And I think that's kind of what made it unique and what made it work as well. So let's begin and talk about season two. So in my opinion, straight away, I will say that season two for me was better than season one. There was a lot of improvements. Uh, if you remember in season one, it was only their first uh, year, of course. Uh, but I, like I said, they did a great job. But season two is definitely an improvement, both on the storylines and kind of how it's, uh, it's a lot more in depth and how much broader it is in terms of showing us all the teams. Of course, uh, last year, both Ferrari and Mercedes did not take part and kind of the stars of the show, let's be honest, was Haas and Gunther Steiner. I mean, uh, when he went mad in Australia in 2018, it was just like he was the star of the show. And once again, yes, guys, Gunther Steiner, there's more sound clips, more, more classic Gunther moments and that Silverstone episode. Oh my God, that was absolutely hilarious. Now, also, uh, I should point out, actually, I'm not going to be giving away too many spoilers, but uh, this isn't a spoiler-free review. There will be tiny little bits there and there, but once I hope you've seen it, guys, but I'm not going to be giving away massive uh, moments that are on the show. So let's talk about season two. Now, as I said, I definitely think it's better than season one, primarily as I kind of explained, it's a lot more broader. We get to see more teams. We get to see, of course, both uh, Ferrari and Mercedes in there. Those were, especially the Mercedes one, that was a great episode because, of course, as we saw last year, they filmed the Mercedes episode in Germany during the German Grand Prix. And as we know, well, <laughs> uh, as we know, it, was not a great, <laughs> it wasn't a great race for Mercedes. And I must admit, and I'll, I'll get to the positives now, it was really great to have Ferrari and Mercedes in there. And that Mercedes episode was probably one of my favorites. It was definitely a highlight. And it was as bad as it sounded, it was kind of good to hear and kind of good to see Mercedes have a little bit of suffering. <laughs> it was just kind of really funny to see them. And also the interaction between Toto and Lewis Hamilton, obviously in their kind of private meetings. And that was also something that was really cool for Netflix. Even last year, they really have a lot of access and a lot of kind of openness to all of the teams and all of the drivers. And of course, the team principals as well. Right off the bat, we get a hilarious moment where we see Mateb and Otto who, of course, we didn't see in season one, also because, of course, it was a real uh, Maurizio Riva Bene uh, back in 2018. But straight away, we get uh, to see Matteo Binotto and the Netflix guys ask him, do you have a Netflix account? Have you seen the first season? He's like, nope. And I just found that really funny. There's definitely funny moments. Gunther Steiner, he is still the star of the show. He still has some amazing moments. Obviously, the Silverstone one, Oh my days, that was tense. The way him, Kevin Mangston, and Romain Grosjean had that discussion behind closed doors, that was definitely a highlight, but I don't want to, you know, spoil it too much. But again, yeah, Gunther Steiner just, he, he kills it as usual. But we also get to see Ferrari as well. Now, the first few episodes really focus, of course, on Haas and Renault and McLaren. 
And once again, those are very strong storylines. They kind of carried over from 2018, and I really did think that they picked very strong storylines. Now, it wasn't very easy. There was also some really hard moments as well. Of course, the death of Nicky Lauda and um, Antoine Hubert in Belgium when they were following the Alexander Albin storyline, that was really emotional. But I think the way they dealt with it was really well, like really good. Um, it was definitely, it was hard to watch, especially from Albin's point of view, because Netflix did go into a few little things with Alexander Albin, and especially like what happened with his mom a few years ago when she went to, to jail for fraud. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of like, you know, they definitely tried to poke a bit with drama. Perhaps they didn't need it. Perhaps it did. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of that. I thought it was a little bit kind of borderline, but it kind of made it very interesting and definitely certainly opened my eyes to a lot of more stuff that I never knew happened. Now, the one thing I will say that they missed maybe a little bit is I would have liked to see maybe at least a minute or two, not a massive dedication, but I would have liked to see um, the death of Charlie Whiting mentioned because that also happened at the start of 2019 and he was a massive member of the Formula 1 community. I know he wasn't a driver, but... Charlie Whiting, I mean, he was such a massive part of the FIA and all of the drives and all of the uh, team principals knew him as well. So maybe a minute or two would have also been quite good. But overall, in terms of the really hard moments, because guys, 2019 for Formula One, it was a hard year. We saw a lot of people obviously pass away that were integral to not only Formula One, but to motorsport in general. And I feel like the way Netflix handled most of it was really, really good. Now, as far as the episodes themselves, and again, I'm not going to get into too many spoilers because there are a, a bunch of really good kind of moments that we just, I love the access that Netflix has because we never get to see this sort of stuff through broadcasted through Formula One or even through the other media because they don't really kind of get into that and they don't really have access to that sort of thing as well, especially to follow the drivers uh, like Netflix are allowed to. So certainly with the with the start of the season two, we get obviously to see Haas and William's story and Rich Energy, that whole uh, storyline. Oh my days. I mean, the way they introduced Rich Energy with the whole helicopter scene, I was just like, Jesus Christ. So yeah, William's story, he makes an appearance and they actually interview him as well. And that was just I was just watching that and thinking, oh my god, it was just so embarrassing to know what happened in 2019, but at the same time, Haas are also massively involved. But again, I'm not going to get into the whole rich energy, but it was just kind of funny and just seriously made me kind of realize how naive Haas were, especially when they talked to William's story. So yeah, they followed that storyline a little bit and the Haas's uh, season struggles with Daniel Ricciardo and Pierre Gasly. That was really the bulk of the, f of the start of the season. Again, Daniel Rick moving to Renault, having that season, and then the really hard episode for me, Oh, Nico Hülkenberg, and of course in Germany, the whole driver market with him and uh, Esteban Ocon, we get to see quite a little bit of Esteban as well, that was great, his interaction with Toto, uh, but that, oh my god, that Germany episode with Nico Hülkenberg, him losing that podium, that was so hard to watch, because, uh, you know, Nico Hülkenberg, he's basically my brother, <laughs> but no, honestly, um, yeah, he was so close to that podium and all of the emotions you could see in Nico. I think he kind of knew at that point and the entire team knew that he let go of that podium and it was kind of the end of him and Renault for 2020. So yeah, that was also a really fun episode. And in general, they had really good storylines. I feel like it was a little bit weaker towards the last three. I feel like the start of the season and the midpoint of a season two was really, really strong. But then I feel like the last few episodes could have been a little bit better. Now, just like in season one, what I think Netflix did really well in season two is just the way everything looks and certainly some of the stuff that they were able to use from Formula One. As usual, all of the footage that they have and all the onboards and just all the track stuff as well, it all looks so great. I like how Netflix did both season one and season two. It feels high production. It feels really good. And I like the dedication and the work that they put in to the second season and the first one as well. And again, Formula One allowed them to use so much stuff from the past. And what's really cool is that Netflix not only kind of tell the story of 2019 and their little storylines in the episodes, but they also kind of educate people to Formula One in the past. There's a lot of people that I've talked to from outside the UK and definitely America in general, quite a few people actually, that have got into Formula One because of Drive to Survive. And I think they've done a really good job as I said to both uh, tell the storylines and give a bit of history like we saw of course about Mercedes the way they started back in 2010 and some of the history that I had as well Ferrari that was obviously a lot of history behind that so that is something that they did really really well and in general as I said the storylines they picked were really good obviously they weren't allowed or they couldn't quite use all of the drivers because when you kind of think about it in only 10 episodes it's very difficult to tell every single driver's story so now let's move on to some of the negatives and to be honest as I said season two is better better than season one in my opinion it's it's more complete it gives a much better picture of formula one the entire season and certainly it makes it very dramatic i didn't they put so much extra drama into it and i was very very impressed by that uh, but now let's move on as i said to some of the bad points and it's really just kind of little niggles there and there now it 
it still could be a little bit more polished, I feel. There's little kind of cracks there and there. Like in some of the interviews, what I find hilarious, in the first actually episode with Gunther Steiner, um, you can tell that quite a bit of the footage is kind of spliced from different points of the season. And I know to the kind of the regular viewers or to people that, you know, kind of watch uh, Formula 1 maybe, or just watch the just the Netflix thing in general, they, they might not even know. But to me, you kind of see it and it kind of bugs my brain. Like, hang on a minute, that's from way later in the season. Why are you showing that in Australia? Like the Mercedes car, you they reveal the covers off the car and it's the Mercedes in Germany, or especially when doing some of the interviews, because they're trying to tell the story and the uh, interviews, of course, that they're doing with the team principals or the drivers, they're trying to accompany that with the footage. As an example, in the first episode of season two, you can see Gunther Steiner being interviewed and he's talking about something and then they cut to a little bit of footage and they cut back to him talking and he's got like a different haircut. It's him from obviously a different part of the season, but they're splicing it together to give like one sentence. And I don't know, just kind of, that kind of stuff makes it really funny for me. I do I do want to say, actually, a big kind of shout-out to Christian Horner. He was so great. Not only, we knew that Gunther Steiner was going to be great, and Toto Wolff was actually quite funny as well. But Christian Horner, I feel like he adds a lot of drama and really opens up the entire Red Bull uh, Red Bull project and how, oh, the way Pierre Gasly, Pierre Gasly's episode was also super emotional. I feel like, honestly, th this drive to survive season two is like really emotional, especially with, with Pierre Gasly through his up-and-down roller coaster season. Uh, but yeah, as far as the kind of little splicing there and there, that's kind of noticeable. And there's so someone that put on Facebook and this is hilarious when I saw this I was like the internet catches everything you cannot just <laughs> honestly everyone on the internet sees everything and someone put how does Horner have an iPhone 11 Pro at the German Grand Prix if it was released in September I mean Oh my god, only someone on the internet would actually see that. And that is why they kind of use clips from different points uh, throughout the entire season. But again, it's it's one of those things where if you're really weird like me and some people on the internet, you're going to notice that sort of thing. If you're just watching it casually, you don't care. You don't know that, you know, you see some stuff that happens way late in the season, at the start of the season, and it kind of builds the picture. But at the same time, it kind of bugged me a little bit. There was also another little mistake that they put, and this is why the show is really great in general. The quality's high, but it can be polished a little bit. Obviously, there's the sound effects as well. That bugged me from season one, and it still bugs me now. Some of the sound, like when the cars crash or when they kind of touch, they, the, the sound effects that they put in are way over-exaggerated and obviously are kind of dubbed over. They don't happen in real life. Like, watching the Vettel, if you remember in, in uh, the USA Grand Prix where he went on three wheels when his suspension broke, the sound effect that they put in for that when he was driving on three wheels, it's, oh my god, it actually hurt my ears. I was like, this is so annoying. So some of the sound effects could be kind of a little bit better or a little bit more realistic. And also there was one moment where they kind of put a picture of Juan Manuel Correa and Alexander Alban and they didn't actually, and they got the picture completely wrong. They said that it was uh, Juan Manuel Correa in the picture with Alexander Alban when it was actually someone completely different when they were younger. And he actually put on Twitter, he, he literally found it and then basically put it on Twitter and it was kind of like oh my god so yeah there's little mistakes there and there he uh, you know Correa kind of took it in, in his stride and kind of la laughed it off a little bit but to me that's kind of like a really big mistake so it could be a little bit less polished but overall you know I'm kind of nitpicking and the, the really kind of big issues that I have with it which aren't even real issues is that I feel like the Ferrari storyline and again I don't actually know how much access they actually get to Ferrari but I do feel like it could have been a little bit better the Ferrari episode and they mostly covered the USA Grand Prix which I thought was it wasn't that great so I honestly felt like the Ferrari episode could have been a lot stronger I think I think they should have focused a lot more on Monza and kind of also what happened in qualifying because Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel actually had a bit of a disagreement in qualifying in Monza they had a few obviously little incidents later on as well in Brazil and they were kind of really glossed over really quickly in later episodes I felt like the Ferrari episode could have been a lot better a lot more kind of focused on their rivalry instead of 10 minutes they only focused on Monza for like 10 minutes which I thought was a really big surprise by the way I thought that would have been like the entire episode so the Ferrari episode I think could have been a little bit stronger and the final episode as well I think it was called Checkered Flag that could have been a little bit more stronger as well they kind of threw everything into the final episode that they didn't put they kind of you know six or six seconds of Kimi Raikkonen a few little seconds of Lando Norris as well so a lot of people also said that they would have wanted to see Lando in there and all of the drivers but I do kind of understand that it's very difficult in 10 episodes to fit every single driver and every single team so I totally understand that but I'm sure that you know for season three which is by the way confirmed and they were actually filming with Williams in testing so season three is definitely confirmed I feel like they're obviously going to bring back uh, maybe some of the people that weren't in season one or season two so definitely look forward to that but to be honest guys that's really kind of my only problems overall I thought season two was fantastic I really enjoyed it it was well worth the wait and of course now we've got a, a year wait for the uh, 2020 season of uh, Netflix Drive to Survive. A few little nitpicks there and there for me just personally. Maybe I'm being a little bit too kind of OTT on it, but overall I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And once again, I really enjoyed it. And Netflix, yeah, they, I think they smashed it out of the park once again.
So in terms of what I would rate season two of Drive to Survive, I'd probably give it like an A minus. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. A few little bits can be improved there and there, but overall it's a really good just Netflix series in general. You don't have to be a Formula One fan to kind of watch it and love it. There's so much humor as well with, with obviously Gunther, Daniel Ricciardo as well. I think it also, as I said, kind of got a lot of people, certainly season one, into Formula One and hopefully season two will have the exact same effect. So yeah, an A minus in my opinion, really, really good job by Netflix once again. And I look forward to season three in uh, at the end, obviously at the start of the 2021 seasons so that'd be quite exciting and hopefully this season will also be a really great one as well anyway guys there you go that is my review from season two of drive to survive now let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments below i really look forward to seeing what you guys think did you like it did you hate it or what did you like and what did you hate perhaps what do you want to see a little bit more of lando norris was definitely kind of the really big one that we want to see more of lando because he's such a great kind of personality obviously online so he'd be great in netflix as well no doubt we will get to see him next year so yeah Again, let me know in the comments below, guys, what you liked, what you disliked. And I hope you really did enjoy this video. And if you did, don't forget to drop a like, smash that subscribe button, and check out my social medias. Instagram and Twitter will be above. But guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.